exactly three years since Oracle Team USA won that historic 34th America's Cup win in San Francisco Bay. And here in Bermuda, the scene for the next America's Cup in 2017, the clock is ticking as one of the most important dates in the campaign approaches. The 27th of December marks 150 days to the start of competition here in the Great Sound. But it also marks the first day the six teams can launch their one and only America's Cup race boat. The 35th America's Cup is going to be raced on state-of-the-art, high-tech, 50-foot-long foiling multi-hulls. But until their race boat is launched, all six teams have built 45-foot development boats to test with. It's on these boats that the technology and the systems to drive it is being shaped. The pressure is on to build the fastest machine. What you see here is our development programme to lead into that boat. So we're limited on how many foils we can make for that boat. Everything you see is the testing and development phase to take that learning to use it for the 50 for our one shot for the cup boat. Artemis Racing currently have two test boats and a third on its way. Oracle Team USA have three and SoftBank Team Japan have one. Over in the UK, Land Rover BAR have three in the water, whilst Emirates Team New Zealand have built and tested their one boat. The French team, Groupama Team France, have just launched their first test boat. All the team's AC50 race boats will have many elements in common. Much of the specification will be the same. The boat itself, the AC50, it's pretty much a one design uh, boat. The, the hulls are the same, the beams are the same. The wing is the same, so all the physical parts will look the same from the outside. What will be different between the teams that we're allowed to work with and design are the, are the shapes of the dagger boards, which, you know, the boat's flying on, on, these, on these foils, and, uh, but we're able to change the shape to whatever we want. It's totally open, and how we control them, it's totally open. And that means it's what you put inside the hulls, it's how you control the wing. It's what you put under the boat, the foils, that's going to give you the vital winning edge. This is why the design and development of the technology is so important. The work on this America's Cup isn't what one may have previously termed naval architecture. This time around, it's all very different. It's more about high-tech systems and data. I think a control system that most people are familiar with in their day-to-day -day lives are anti-lock brakes on their car. They hit the brake pedal and the computer keeps them from spinning out or going out of control. And that, and that system that once was just a cable between the brake and the pedals now has another computer there. We're doing that now with the boats. So systems that were once a, a line you pull, you know, there's a computer now and, and algorithms that make the performance better, more accurate and precise. It's a reason why all of the teams have looked outside of the sailing industry for inspiration more than ever before. Cup defenders Team Oracle USA have turned to the automotive and aerospace industries. They're keen to capitalize on a wealth of external expertise. They will have technology, particularly in those bigger industries, technology that's really well developed. And it's up to us to be able to adapt that technology to our applications. I'm bringing my expertise in flight control system and in flight control system testing, which are two key parameters for the Cup. There is a lot of similarity between this boat and an aircraft. The foil on this boat are exactly as our wing on the aircraft. They, they allow the boat to go above the water exactly as the wing allows us to fly. You have to be sure the foil is exactly where you want, when you want. And this is exactly what we are doing on our aircraft with all the elevator, aileron and wing. If you don't have a proper control system, if you don't have a, an accurate control system, you can't have a stable flight, so you need this control to, to, to save this boat. One of the keys to controlling the hugely complicated system is through the hydraulics that are powered by the crews as they grind on the winches. For that, the design team need experts in aerospace motion and control technologies. We control everything that moves on the boat, uh, the jib, the main sheet, the wing, dagger boards, all the pitch control, a lot of it's gonna come down to how clever and creative and light and good the control systems gets. And that's gonna allow the sailors to be efficient, make the most of their power, which is very limited, and be able to move everything they need exactly when they need it to. And as all the teams test their 45-foot development boats day after day, this ultimately puts an awful lot of responsibility into the hands of the sailors themselves. Each position on board the boat kind of has their own 
somewhat industry they have to learn, you know, so certain position on the boats are involved in the hydraulics, other are involved in some mechanical system. And so in that part, it's been fascinating because for a lot of the guys, myself included, I mean, the America's Cup's always about learning and who can kind of outlearn the other team. But the evolution and, and just the education process in this campaign has been really one of the most rewarding I can remember. Well, are you more of a, a test pilot now than, you know, than a helmsman? Well, I think the crews nowadays really are test pilots. The boats are heavily undermanned. They are very, very powerful, yet they are human powered. So it's like you have too much to do during a race, yet you somehow have to prioritise that work list and try and sort of keep your head above water. And that's kind of just doing a few laps on your own. Throw in another boat that's going head to head in a battle out on the water. And it really is about trying to put all those pieces into play. And, and we essentially have a playbook like a football team. So we have this technical side, a playbook, as well as our racing tactical playbook. Well, Jimmy, when you're pushing hard in training, it doesn't always go according to plan. There can be the odd sketchy moment. And I've got one right here. What's going on? This is, really can happen at any given moment on these boats. You really are pushing the edge, you're redlining. This is a, an example of going out, came out of a jive. We, we just heated up a little bit too much, got a little bit high on the ride height, and ultimately led to a capsize. Well, all this testing is to produce the 150 foot boat they'll race in the next America's Cup. And that boat is promising to be the fastest race boat ever. If you want more of a rundown, have a look at this.